Traditionally, it was said that in the fourth week after his enlightenment, the Buddha contemplated the Abhidhamma, working out the complexities of what it was that he was looking at. Tradition also says that he taught the Abhidhamma to his mother. <coughs> his mother had died seven days after giving birth and had been reborn in the Tusita heaven. If you like to take the chart, planes of existence, you will see that on the lower page there are deva loka or celestial planes and one of those is tusita and two down from there is the first is yama and then there's tavatinsa tradition has it that his mother came from the um, Tusita heaven to the Tavatinsa heaven and the Buddha gave the teaching in the Tavatinsa heaven. The reason he had to go there was that he wanted to teach the Abhidhamma in one unbroken teaching. A heavenly day was long enough to do this, but an earthly day was not. And if he said that he would teach during the time of the earthly day, and then at the earthly night he would return to the human plane and tell his chief disciple, Sariputta, what he had been teaching, and then Sariputta was the man who codified the teaching. <coughs> if you find this a little doubtful, which is difficult to swallow, you can take a purely um, psychological interpretation. You can say that the Buddha spent periods on, of intense, deep, deep, meditation in which he worked out this Abhidhamma. Yes, so you can say that the, the Buddha could perhaps have worked out the Abhidhamma during periods of intense meditation and then came back to normal human level of consciousness and instructed Sariputta. Abhidhamma has been highly respected during the many centuries and in one case it was all inscribed on gold plates by one of the Sri Lankan kings and one particular book was set with jewels. It is especially revered in the country of Myanmar, where monks in their monastic training are required to learn and memorize this summary, which I mentioned, the Abhidhamma Sangaha. To give you an idea of um, the high regard which people have for the Abhidhamma. If you look at the great commentator Buddha Gosa, in his commentary called the Expositor, he says, tradition has it that those monks only who know Abhidhamma are true preachers of the Dhamma. 
the rest, though they speak on the Abhidhamma, are not preachers thereof. And why? They, in speaking on the Abhidhamma, confuse the different kinds of kama and its results, the distinction between mind and matter, and the different kinds of mental states. The students of Abhidhamma do not thus get confused. Hence a monk who knows Abhidhamma, whether he preaches the Dhamma or not, will be able to answer questions whenever asked. He alone, therefore, is a true preacher of the Dhamma. And we find also in a commentary to the Mahagosinga Sutta. One who is ignorant of Abhidhamma is also ignorant of what are right views and what are wrong views, of what is Buddhist philosophy and what is misleading philosophy. And in talking in ignorance, he may talk of Buddhist philosophy as misleading philosophy and misleading philosophy as Buddhist philosophy. Right views as wrong views and wrong views as right views. He may get confused, muddled in mind, or mix up the true Dhamma with extraneous things or false Dhamma and the false Dhamma as the true Dhamma. So, the next question is, what exactly is Abhidhamma? 